While we did have a chance to sort of graze over the idea of the LGBT community and their influences on the field of mixology when we talked about the Cosmo in a video a couple weeks ago, uh, we didn't have a chance to really dive into it deep or talk about anybody in the community who is a prominent mixologist. As a celebration of Pride Month, we are going to remedy that today by talking about India's first trans bartender, Faye Barreto, on today's episode of Mike's Hard Reviews. Hey there, Heather Hother, my name is Michael. I am a bartender from Kalamazoo, Michigan, and happy Pride Month to everyone out there. Hopefully you guys are all having a very uh, fun and inclusive and uh, important month, especially in America right now. Hopefully everybody's doing okay. I just got the set so we could talk about today's subject, Faye Barreto, the first trans bartender to come out of India. Faye was born in Mumbai, India, and grew up there assigned female at birth. Though, in an interview with a website called The Established, he details how that was never something he connected with. The person writing the interview states that Faye is sort of this tomboy type for the first part of his life before identifying as a man, and that kind of decision to do so comes about in a very funny way uh, when Faye goes off to college. <laughs> Faye goes to an all-girls school in, I think, Mumbai, and, uh, Needless to say, being a mask-presenting trans man at an all-girls school was very popular. <laughs> so much so uh, that he doesn't name the school for the sake of protecting, you know, the LGBT individuals who were going there, you know, independently of him. <laughs> Faye goes to college and at that time discovers, you know, his identity, begins to identify as a man, and sort of joins the trans community at that point. Uh, as he moves into his interest in bartending. In an interview with Beam Suntory, the people who make Suntory whiskey or and Jim Beam, if you couldn't piece that together, that is. Faye says that uh, he sort of stumbles into this idea of wanting to experience mixology and learn the craft because he had a conversation with one of his friends and he said, what is one of your favorite things? The answer was alcohol. And it was that easy for him to go, oh yeah, you know what, yeah, let's go ahead and study that. <laughs> From the time that Faye graduated to 2020, uh, when the first COVID-19 lockdowns happened, Faye was working as a bartender in a couple different places in both Mumbai and I think Goa is how you pronounce, Goa is how you pronounce it, I think. I hope I'm getting that right. Two different cities and areas in India. Things kind of take a dive in March, 2020 because the international COVID-19 lockdowns meant that restaurants and bars were closed indefinitely throughout India. Around that same time, uh, some friends of Faye, including I think uh, his neighbor, who is a Russian sober Buddhist and uh, an actress, uh, which is crazy. Faye, Faye lives a fucking crazy cool life, man. <laughs> his neighbors uh, convince him, or rather encourage him, to go out and start his own bartending agency, to reach out and you know become a face of the community uh, in a way that allows other people to enjoy it as well. The idea um, collectively comes about to be this agency that he calls Mr. Bartender and the crew, Mr. Bartender being Faye's nickname. And the idea is to include more LGBT individuals as well as women in the field of mixology, because if you haven't noticed based on most of the uh, <laughs> people who make YouTube content around mixology and most famous bartenders, it's a very male dominated industry. And Faye wanted to sort of in, be more inclusive to people of other identities and uh, other sexes um, while working in the community. Additionally, uh, Mr. Bartender and the crew acts as, also, uh, as a sort of um, anti-sex trafficking and pro-transgender inclusivity uh, sensitivity, training, sensitivity training organization. So they do a lot of really important work, not just with the field of mixology, but in the terms of introducing the people of India and really the whole world to this thing that is being trans or being gay or being a member of the broader LGBT community, like so many of us are. <laughs> the agency started in March 2020 uh, online as bartending training courses, and eventually when things began to open back up, it became an official bartending agency that has had incredible success. Most of the people who have taken, you know, been involved in the courses and been involved with the agency are now part of major bar menu takeovers and uh, cocktail displays and have their own businesses. It's crazy. Faye has built this portion, you know, this agency in the industry that is so powerful in India that it is rapidly expanding and has made him one of the most sought after bartenders in all of India. Frankly, it's incredibly exciting to have learned about him and a little disappointing that I hadn't heard his name at some point prior to this, because Faye seems to be this really incredible 
workaholic, but still incredibly personable and fascinating personality who I would frankly like to meet and bartend with. It's so cool to see what he has done and, you know, bring two communities together that normally are kind of separate, even if it isn't maliciously so. All that is to say that Faye has come about uh, into this profession as a absolute canon, an absolute powerhouse. And I wanted to highlight him and some of the work him and his agency have done to celebrate this thing we call Pride. So what we're gonna do is we're going to make a uh, cocktail from one of their most recent menu takeovers at the Mama Misa restaurant in South Goa, uh, India. And I wanna make a quick disclaimer before we get started that this is not necessarily a drink that Faye himself came up with independently. Um, this is one of their agency menu drinks and I'm entirely sure that Faye had a say in it, but I do not specifically have proof that it was his cocktail entirely. <laughs> as it turns out, when you work exclusively in the industry and not additionally as a content creator, a lot of your recipes, in fact, in his case, nearly all of them do not make it to the internet. And there's no book publishing them. There's no, uh, I couldn't find any forum posts. I, I mean, I, I was hoping to look in the right place and find something, but I couldn't. So instead, I'm going to do a uh, sort of a personal adaptation of a G and T from their uh, menu at the Mama Miso bar takeover starting right now. So we're going to make a G and T today. Exactly what is that? That is both a play on words and a variation of a gin and tonic built apparently like a Tom Collins uh, featuring a couple of really interesting flavors uh, that I think are gonna be absolutely phenomenal together. Uh, so G and T is sort of a colloquial way to phrase gin and tonic. G for gin, T for tonic, G and T, gin and tonic. It, I don't think I need to explain this to you. <laughs> the spelling of this particular cocktail is the letter G and then the word T, as in loose leaf T, which comes into the cocktail in the form of a hibiscus syrup. I do not have a recipe for any of the ingredients or this cocktail itself. Uh, from that menu, it, just, it was just a list of ingredients. So this is a two to one sugar water syrup with a third cup of hibiscus leaf tea um, steeped into it as it boiled and the sugar began to dissolve. Once the sugar was fully dissolved, I just strained it all out and boom, hibiscus syrup. And then it maintains the same sort of tonic profile by being lengthened um, like a Tom Collins, but instead of with club soda, with tonic water, which I have some of right here. Basically a variation on a Tom Collins highball, so let's go ahead and make a G&T. The base for this is gonna be a shaken cocktail, and I'm gonna go ahead and start that off with one ounce of lime juice. Get that all nice and freshly squeezed, dump that right on in there. I'm gonna follow that up one ounce of our hibiscus syrup. In all honesty, I, I, I avoided building this cocktail um, until now, because uh, I wanted to try it for the first time on camera and um, see what it was like. I'm gonna follow that up with two full ounces of gin. The rules surrounding alcohol in different countries are vast and complicated, and import law is always a problem. <laughs> so that basically means that the gin that they list on the menu, uh, which I have shown on the screen by this point, hopefully, um, I don't think I can get here in the States. So I'm going to use my preferred gin, which is Gun Room 12 Botanicals. Uh, Beef Eater or Bombay Sapphire are also totally fine. Um, whatever you like will work just fine. That's all of our base, so let's go ahead and uh, throw some ice in here and shake this to chill into loop. Now, because this is going to be a lengthened cocktail with that tonic water, I'm not gonna shake this for too long. We're gonna keep our normal ice amount, but I'm only gonna do about 10 seconds worth of shaking. We'll cap that up, tap that down, and then shake for 10 seconds. Because this cocktail is a highball, we're gonna put it into a highball glass. And rather than do cracked ice, I've got a bunch of uh, pebble ice here that I'm going to put in to get this nice and full up. Dump that ice right on in. Gonna grab our cocktail and double strain directly over that ice. I love working with hibiscus because the color it gives things is fucking gorgeous, dude. <laughs> to finish that off, we've gotta lengthen it with just a little bit of tonic water. Gonna pour that off the ice as best as possible to keep it from separating. We're gonna go ahead and grab some mint from an off-screen <laughs> an off-screen glass of water. Bunch that together, get a little squeeze to express it, and put that down through our ice. Now that, ladies and gentlemen, is Faye Barreto's G and T. Alrighty, our station cleaned up. 
Let's go ahead and give this G and T a try. Gonna grab a reusable straw, don't come after me. Put that down in there. That mixed up a little bit, give it a taste. Cheers. <laughs> wow, that's really fun. <laughs> Hibiscus tea is, I can't even remember if it's a green tea or a black tea, but it's very fruity. Very fruity and very tart. And the thing about it is that when you put it alongside other citruses, it really just fucking blah, hits you with this really impressive sourness, which is the very a very nice way of saying a moderated tartness, which I think is working perfectly here. My God. You get those fun and complex botanicals from the gin alongside this very nice tartness and brightness and sharpness from the lime. That very fruity hibiscus with that nice little bit of zest on the back of it. Kind of moderated actually by the tonic. It's interesting. That kind of quine, uh, quine, quininated? Quine, quine, the, the, the quinine. There's quinine in in, 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 in tonic, wow, I can't speak. Shit got me fucked up, Jesus. The quinine in the tonic is bitter and it's sort of pulling away from the sweetness of the syrup and moderating the tartness and sourness of all the ingredients. It comes together beautifully and it looks fucking stunning. If I had more, you know, less floppy mint, it'd be nicer, but you get what I'm saying. Fucking delicious, dude, holy shit. <laughs> and what's fascinating, it doesn't read like a gin and tonic, but I, it kind of scratches the same itch in a way. It's not super intense like a gin and tonic, but it hits that same note. It's there loud enough that I'm like, yeah, I get it. And in the context of these other flavors, it is, it's basically a gin and tonic drinker's Tom Collins. It's so, so good. Oh my God. It kind of encapsulates everything that I know about Faye kind of eccentric, but well put together and very thoughtful and and sort of just cool as shit. <laughs> wow, that's so good. I love that. Wow. I, I, I'm, this, this, I honestly, guys, look, I know I don't have any say in this. This is probably the drink of the summer though, or could be if more people knew about it. Like, dude, look at it. <laughs> it's a phenomenal drink. And I mean, it just goes to show how good Faye and the people he's trained are at this. There's a very like creative notion to it. There's a fun play on words, a fun title. It's easy to make, it's well marketable and it actually tastes good. It's not like those dumb specials you see at like Applebee's or like restaurant chains here in the States where it's kind of shallow and hollow and cuts corners. No, this is perfectly honest and clearly well thought. And it uses specialized ingredients that are unique uh, and technique to use them that is incredibly important and you know, distinguishes the work that they're doing from what people here are doing. The point is, Faye is really fucking good at what he does. And this is a perfect example of it. <laughs> Honestly though, this whole thing uh, has been really fascinating to learn about because Faye's not easy to find online. Um, like I said, the whole not being a creator but being an industry bartender thing makes you more difficult to find. You are a member of the mixology community exclusively. Uh, and while you may appear online doing your thing, you're not, it's not your chief, you know, money maker. You're not doing that, the, excuse me, the whole time. So getting to like go out and hunt this information down and really like examine everything and try to be holistic about sharing this information with you is really important to me. And I think really important to the LGBT community as well. Faye, uh, Faye has this menu he was working on with Amy Shroff, um, a flair bartender from India. And uh, they're close friends. They worked on this menu they, uh, they were coming up with um, themed after the colors of the rainbow as like a sort of pride focused cross between, you know, personal identity and the mixology community. And it was a very refined menu. Like there's a bunch of, like it's been fine tuned over the years since 2020. And it's been, just, you know, getting more and more refined. And these drinks look amazing. And they've got a really impressive technique included in them. And if I'm not mistaken, they've actually been uh, shared with investors in Goa, India, and they might get their first gay club, 
which is kind of the whole point behind it. Bay wants there to be more inclusivity in mixology, especially in India, where it's just not a thing that they've been able to establish yet. They're not a, you know, what he refers to in the uh, interview I was reading as a post-Pride country, like we are here in the States. It's not something people are open about yet, but creating a space for it to come out and be proud and, and exist, you know, without fear of persecution is a big part of what that menu means. And hopefully uh, its completion and shared, you know, being shared with the world gets India their first gay bar and like true gay nightlife outside of the, you know, drag shows and things that they already have. It's really great. You know, everything about Faye is fucking awesome. His drinks, his personality, uh, everything. And I'm really happy to have gotten to get up here today and tell you all about that and share it with you because frankly, things have been kind of rough for the community lately. <laughs> Not to get too dour or depressing or sad, but they're here in the States, especially at least right now, I mean, it's kind of always been happening elsewhere, but right now um, there's a really serious, serious attempt to eradicate trans and other LGBT individuals from society. Um, there's a lot of fascistic assholes out there who would rather see us dead than treated like human beings with basic human decency. So seeing somebody be so bold and proud of who they are and put that into their work and make it something that we can rally behind and something that cannot be killed is beautiful. And Faye has done exactly that. There was a portion of the interview on The Established where Faye does talk about his uh, sort of experiences in the workplace with people being very homophobic uh, and transphobic and generally disagreeable to the extent of them being horrible bigots and how mixology became his form of, you know, proving himself. And it really shows that not only are trans people capable of amazing things, they deserve to have the chance to do them because without that chance, we will be missing out on so much more than we realize, and we will be the villains if we do not protect them. Trans rights are human rights. And now more than ever, we need to protect our brothers and sisters in the trans community, especially other members of the LGBT. We owe it to them to do it because they are the reason pride exists. They are the reason why all of us can exist and wave flags like this and be proud for the whole month of June. So, to not be on my soapbox the whole time, I hope everybody's doing okay. And I hope you all, you know, use some of the time you have this June to be reflective and supportive and give shelter and aid to what is inevitably going to be a storm of refugees from the American South fleeing persecution for being trans. And on top of that, remember, there's no better way to piss off transphobes than by being you. Don't be afraid. Protect yourself, but don't be afraid. Be holistically you. Be everything about you you want to be that they hate, and then double down on it. Don't let them silence you in any regard to who you are or who you want to be. Fuck them. <laughs> the only good Nazi is a dead Nazi. Keep that in mind. So to sort of wind this down and be a little bit less depressing, because frankly, there's no way to discuss these kinds of things without acknowledging the reality. Let's go ahead and do another reading from our book, Crisp Toasts. We are still in the section on abs and friends, and I think we're getting kind of close to the halfway point, actually. So hopefully we'll be moving on to the next category of accountants soon. I wasn't expecting to read that. So we read our toast today and raise a glass to the trans community. Here's to our absent friends, both the long-lost friends of our youth and our long-lost youth. Cheers to all of you out there. Thank you all so much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. All of the links to the interviews I was referencing in this video will be in the description down below, um, as well as a bunch of information about Faye, and also at the top, the Trevor Project, um, an LGBT-focused um, 
ch a charity group that focuses on um, diminishing rates of suicide among uh, LGBT youth. Um, more important now than ever that we support them in their ever-growing need to be strong and take care of a lot of people. If you can, give what you can, um, and if not, at the very least, support them in everything that they do online. Uh, remember, silence is violence, and right now more than ever, we need loud voices to support the LGBT community. You can follow me on my socials if you want. I'm gonna flash them on screen now. There, you saw them, that was it. Uh, not the point of today's video. Don't follow me, actually, uh, right now. That's not the point. Go to the other links, read about Faye. Tell people about Faye. Tell people about the LGBT community and how much they belong in this community of mixology. Support them, give it to the Trevor Project, do all that good shit. I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Remember to drink responsibly and have a great day. Bye-bye.